God and his apostles keep. He will set you up to where you will never have to, he will never allow you to depend on anybody else as your first priority. Oh. I'm a teacher, baby. This is the truth that people have to understand if you have this apostolic core. The people who you think should help you, they don't want to help you. Come on, teach us. Because he wants you to be liberated from them. Yes, sir. So when you speak, you don't have to try and please them. Yes, sir. When he came to speak something, you will speak it like he told you to speak it. Because they can't come to you and say, well, how can you say that after what I've done for you? God is never going to lie to be dependent on nobody else. But he called you to be a prophet and a prophet. He's never going to do it. He wants you to have liberty to speak. That's why you can't have no friends. You may try. It'll last a minute, but you can't really have friends if you're a pastor. Yes, so true. People never going to understand you. And then in the lack of understanding, they begin to disrespect you. And watch this now. Because of your anointing, you can't eat it. While they only joking, something inside of you turns sour. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on. Because they're the price you pay to walk in this office. So when you're around people who don't honor you and who don't respect you, it's a sour taste in your mouth. Because you know that you done been through hell and high water to sit here and then somebody try to water down your money, it's going to cause your better to bother me. It's going to get you, I'm telling you. It's going to get you. You stop talking on the phone because it's going to get you. They don't know what you went through. They don't know the pain you go through. They don't know what your 2 o'clock in the morning is like. God, I feel like preaching here. And when it gets to the point of when they can't honor you, when they're only tolerating you, you're not going to be able to eat it. Yes, yes. You have to make a decision. This is not the right relationship for me. Mm. You don't listen. Oh, God, y'all are ready for this. Come on. This is not the right job. Come on, come on. This is not the right companion. Come on, come on. Uh, come on, Apostle. My, my, my. It's getting quiet. Come on. Listen. I'm the same one who rapped with Ricky Ross. Now I'm with God because he's the real boss. When you teach, the last thing about the apostle is he says to withdraw self, to abstain from associating with. It's the hardest thing to do when you have a true apostolic call in your life. To come to the realization that you're never going to be able to fellowship with people. Come on. There are going to be one or two people. TDJ said there will be three of them in your lifetime. You're doing good. There will be one or two people that God's anointed to hear you and to walk with you. But you cannot. God, help me here. Come on. Who am I helping here? You have to stop trying and abstain from hanging around with spiritually immature people. Amen. Your job is to give them information from God. Your job is to receive revelation of mysteries and then release it to them. They are going to damage your spirit. Yes. Oh, we understand praying thing. We understand choir. They're going to damage you. Then get out the prayer scene. Wow. Your life is too important. Wow. wow. Yes, sir. Can I explain something to you before we go home? If I'm happy, you say amen. Amen. Sit down. You, y'all, y'all sit down and explain this. I, I know if you're really connected to this, this won't help you. Let me explain the difference between the office of the prophet and the apostle. We talk about kingdom government, right? Yes. We understand kingdom government, right? Yes. God's government is who? His apostles, his prophets, his evangelists, his pastors, his teachers. Now, evangelists and pastors and teachers. They all, they all fall under the teaching anointing. An evangelist proclaims, a pastor and teacher, teacher, but that's all in the office of teacher. I've been saying that's why in 1228, he said first the apostles, secondary prophets, and then teachers. A pastor is not but a teacher. Evangelist is not but a teacher because evangelist, like my wife always tell me that, Pastor Penn is a pure evangelist because since she got there, she just proclaiming, proclaiming, proclaiming. She, got, she proclaims the word with power. That's what evangelism is. Now, when you look at the two offices on the foundation of the church, the apostle and the prophet, they're different even though they both receive the mysteries. Yes, amen. A 
apostle, prophetess. From the office of the apostle, I'm dealing with constitutional issues. I'm dealing with systems. I'm dealing with revelation that's going to change the church going forward. God help me. From the office of the apostle, remember now the book, the constitution was written by apostles. So from this office, the revelation I'm, see, I'm receiving is to take the church forward. Which means that the words you understood yesterday are going to be different. From this office, it's for instruction and direction. Let me say it again. Please pay attention. This is where church folk fall asleep, and it's very important. See, it, see, this is where I believe we get in trouble in church. I've been there before God before this. Every church in the world should be talking about this. We are here for the kingdom. Jesus made that clear. The apostle is in the foundation of the church. He receives constitutional revelation. That means system changing revelation. That means ministry changing. That means law changing revelation. From this office, the laws for the church was written. Not only me, any apostle in this building. So when, when God's going to give a new law, it's going to come to the apostle. Is this too much teaching? Are y'all still with me? If you are anointed to be an apostle, you wouldn't be in this ministry if you wasn't connected some kind of way. When you have an apostle, it's different from a prophetic anointing. A prophetic anointing is turn left, turn right. Apostolic ministry changes systems. It changes your way of thinking. If you're a gentleman loving your your thing will change, say amen. amen. An apostolic ministry would change your way of thinking. An apostle receive revelation of what God is doing next in his kingdom. Not that he's gonna give you a call. The prophet's gonna tell you that. Amen. What I'm gonna tell you is this is what the word says, your sins are forgiven. Even though it's been there. Y'all have 10 minutes? What happened when Jesus established the church? Peter said, you the Christ. Was he always the Christ? <laughs> now I'll be in trouble right here. Listen, gentlemen, love, listen. Listen. No longer about church anymore. Listen to me carefully. When Jesus said, when Peter said, you the Christ, was he always the Christ? Yes. But nobody knew it. Because some of y'all said no. And that's where the church gets stuck. Apostles reveal truth that been hidden, but it's always true. Can I do this? When he said, You're the Christ, what Jesus said, and you're Peter, you're an apostle. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. Ain't no way you would have known that in your flesh. But the Father has revealed it to you by His Spirit. So the Holy Ghost. Revealed something to the office of the apostle that was already true, but didn't nobody know. Mm. Now watch this. An apostolic revelation ought to be something that will get you in trouble. Mm. If it's something that you reveal that everybody accepts, it's not an apostolic revelation. Mm. My God, I'm preaching good. If everybody accepts it now, God the Christ, the Son of the living God, and you are Simon, you're a piece of a rock, an apostle. You didn't receive that from yourself. The Holy Ghost told you that. And that's going to be the foundation of my church. I'm going to build my church in the back of some people who I choose and process so that when I expect them to speak, they will say it. They may get rejected, but they will say it. They may not be accepted, but they will say it. They might be out there, but do you know? I'm teaching. I know. I know you all around me talk about your business and talk about your neighbor, so you can laugh. But I gotta teach you this. We're in a different place with this whole thing right now. Do you know? Do you know that 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 what, 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 what Peter revealed was something that would have gotten killed? Yes. Yes. Do you know it was a crime for an Israeli to say that somebody was the son of God? Talk to me here now. Do you know it was a crime? They, they would have stoned him. For calling a man the son of God? Do you know what it takes to stand up around some niggas you don't really trust and make that revelation? Because it wasn't like he trusted or let them be 